All right, so story in 2023, it's got a lot of cool new stuff. Um, what we've, uh, one of the neat things that's been added is, is uh, being able to create your own custom metrics in the historian with ad hoc expressions. So you can build an expression into your client and it will then uh, evaluate that expression on retrieval and allow you to generate calculations. So there's a, there's a real rich function library for that. Um, those expressions are available uh, in the uh, uh, web client interface. They're also available in the SQL interface and also in the SDK interfaces. <clears throat> uh, Historian has been uh, enhanced to replicate to Pi and Aviva Data Hub. So if you're familiar with Aviva replication, oh, here, let me turn the camera to um, <clears throat> The uh, Historian is able to replicate to itself and insight and so the historian can can tier itself into another uh, uh, historian. Um, now we can do that same replication tiering into the Pi system and uh, Data Hub. And then uh, the user interfaces, as in all the products, have been improved. Uh, new modern look and feel in the uh, historian management console, in the historian client tools, and in the uh, the web client as well. Excel has been improved. The 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 task pane add-in. Uh, allowing you to get detailed uh, tag records, full or delta, um, and the whole process of using it has been uh, streamlined. As well as security has been hardened uh, into the historian. It makes it really easy now. You know, historian had fairly decent client to historian security, but it was a little difficult to set up and, you know, getting all the certificates right and all these things. So that's been greatly simplified and it just basically now happens out of the box. So just a quick UI UX. Historian has been refactored into the Aviva design standards, like all the other products that we have, um, just giving that whole same familiar user experience. Client tools uh, for the desktop clients and trend and query have been uh, also adapted to include a ribbon bar. Uh, and that ribbon bar is uh, basically replacing all the little icons that used to be across the the top. Um, the web interface, you can choose just dynamically switching between the classic one, which is uh, the way the historian client web originally had, and then there's a new modern look interface, which just changes the way the, the, the thing looks as far as how it uh, shows data when you scroll over the, uh, the, the trend, how the trend is displayed, how you pan and zoom, and also uh, <clears throat> how content is displayed when you do searching. So. When you, in the old classic one, you had to kind of pick and, you know, go to each tag if you wanted to do some picking of specific tags. Now in the new one, there's a uh, checkbox by the tags and there's more metadata displayed in the, in the search uh, about what the tag is, what its description is, what its unit of measure is, where the tag is located in your plant model. Replication uh, for the historian is the way we send data to other destinations, and now there's four of them. So we have we can replicate to uh, an, the historian, another Aviva historian. We can replicate to uh, Insight. We can replicate to Pi, and we can replicate to uh, Data Hub. <clears throat> the historian also uses the same replication technology to load auto summary. Auto summary is a is a mechanism that uh, was incorporated into the historian to automatically generate hourly summaries of analog values. <clears throat> and that greatly improves long-term history and retrieval and, and such. Because if, you you know, if you have a year's worth of data at once a second, uh, you know, there's and only a thousand pixels on your screen, it doesn't make any sense to send the several million records into your client tool. Right? So auto summary was greatly improved for that long-term trending history. The problem with that was is that when you turned it on, it would only begin auto summarying from the point you upgraded to that version. When you turn on replication, it would only begin sending data from the point you turned it on. And most people had historian, historical data. The whole purpose of a historian is to store historical data it had going way back, you know, even years in the past. <clears throat> so 
that's all been the auto summary mechanism uses this and this tool was first released to uh, provide auto summary backfill and uh, it you know did that quite well and so now we've released this and enhanced it to all the replication targets the historian uh, will backfill uh, you basically just set your start time and end time really uh, there's no reason to change any of these numbers other than start time and end time um, you can just fire it off and it'll just go and, and auto auto fill and auto replicate back uh, as you uh, said and so you can do this to your Aviva historians to your insight solution to your Pi server to wherever that data needs to go, um, and it's been uh, improved to be much faster and give you uh, this replication process uh, really quickly. <clears throat> so, IDASs have been have evolved uh, over time, right? So, you know, IDASs used to use name pipes, then they were converted to a, a TCP connection. But they still required kind of a bi-directional port setup where the historian had to be able to make a connection to the IDAS and the IDAS had to make a connection to the historian. And in 2023, um, it's now uh, where you can firewall this off and have no inbound ports uh, to your IDAS. <clears throat> Expressions is the is the is the neat thing that we have in here. So we can go in and, and create an expression uh, and uh, begin to change, you just change a little search box up on the top and we'll go over this in detail in the, uh, in the in the deep dive, but you can basically pick a, pick a tag. That tag can then be evaluated with another tag and uh, it will then bring the Units of measure for each tag, it will con it'll convert them so that they're normalized to the first tag's unit of measure and allow you to build an expression and then change the name of the expression and save it off with the content so that you can you can just uh, keep that control error as part of the thing. And so that's a that's now a part of that piece of content. You can do other types of things like averages. You can do time weighted averages, you can do statistical averages. Um, you can put expressions inside of expressions. It's all very powerful. Um, there's a bunch of functions that exist for expressions. And you can do, there's conditional things you can do. So if your data is bad, what do you want to do with the, the, the value? If it's, um, if the average is of a certain level, And so you can, there's basic unit of measures there. You can, I mean, time time dimensions, you can put a number in front of them and say like five minutes or one day, or, and you can say if this value is something. So there's all kinds of, you can combine these all together to get and improve your data for output for uh, you know, supporting reports, dashboards, performance, things that you want to see so that the bad data doesn't confuse everybody. You can also do types of uh, expressions like integrals, which will be a total. You can then um, also <clears throat> do time shift expressions such that if you have data going through a pipe or something like that, you can same kind of same spot in those measurements on uh, things. So there's all kinds of things you can do with uh, with these ex expressions, handle calculations for pump efficiency or understanding, you know, loading on a, on a pump station if there's multiple pumps. Um, we can do the logical, substituting, you know, bad da data for good data. Um, and there's just a bunch of functions um, that exist. Uh, <clears throat> there's statistical functions, averages and average, totals and total. Um, the one with DS is the simple statistic, which basically weights each record equally, and the one without the S time weights each record so that you get a true time weighted average or a time weighted interval. <clears throat> and so if you're building a function, you know, it's like if you looked at this thing um, without knowing the unit to measure, uh, you don't know how to add these things together. And so unit of measure is now taken into account. 
So it's important that you, when you configure your attributes and tags going into the story, that you give them a unit of measure um, so that the historian can properly evaluate what unit you're storing them in. But then that, that doesn't limit it. So you can still add these together and you don't have to know how to do it, right? So you don't have to know how to convert from one unit to another. The historian will do it all for you and give you the correct answer. Um, it's basically calculated on demand. Um, we're looking at maybe in a future release, having the results get restored back in the historian, but right now it's just calculated on demand um, and it's exposed uh, via the public APIs, as well as it's there's an interactive editor in the historian client web. And obviously this is the first release of this, so there's a bunch of new ideas coming in place to uh, uh, enhance this, add new functions, different things. Um, the Excel tool has been enhanced, right? So the classic ribbon bar tool um, was very feature rich, but it was limited because of the APIs that it leveraged that only the 32-bit version of Excel supported those APIs. <clears throat> so a uh, replacement to that was done with a task pane add-in, uh, and it's part of a, a basically a web install um, it's still, the, the add-in is added by the historian. So you browse to your historian and say, give me the web add-in to my Excel thing. It will drop it into Excel. And now it works with all the modern versions of Excel. And so slice by, for instance, has been added into that, that function. So I can use the slice by feature on the analog summary to, uh, instead of slicing by time, I can slice by batch or uh, product change or anything that I want, customer ID. And uh, that's refer to that as a, an event. So you can create an event tag like batch ID and then slice by that. The results um, go into your spreadsheet. They can be uh, um, you now detailed values as well. Uh, you can have functions going there. So the spreadsheet will automatically dynamically Re recalculate itself if you change like the, the date or time, spreadsheet will automatically uh, recalculate itself. And there's a bunch of functions that you can use. This is just a partial list um, that are there to uh, load into your, into your spreadsheet. Just a miscellaneous thing. So one of the things that happened in the, in the client web is that it color codes the uh, the tags and it's, it did it based on uh, order of adding and it could get confusing for people like for instance if you put in your temperature tag first and your pressure tag second and then the other one you put the pressure tag in first and the temperature tag in second then they, they would be colored incorrectly so that the consistency from one piece of content to the other piece of content was not maintained so now we've been able to you can have e much easier uh, color assignment that you can now, based on the unit of measure, you can say color the tags a certain way so that all unit of measure type tags will be colored um, in a certain fashion and then uh, give you much more consistency across the content you create in the web client. <clears throat> so there is a limitation of this is that now, similar tags of the same dimension will uh, have the same color. So the storing interface has been proved. This whole thing of, you know, if you ever see this type of thing accessing the historian, the browser comes back and yells at you and says, I'm not secure. And you say, wait, what, you know, what's going on? Um, and so the historian will now uh, he had untrusted certificates. That was the, the problem with that. And now the historian will um, give you a page that uh, sorry, this is what I wanted. So the historian will give you a, a page. Hang on, my presentation's messed up here. You, you got to unhide it. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll just see this here. The story will show you a web page basically saying, you know, when you first connect to it and you connect to that 32569 port, the historian say, hey, I have other ways of connecting to the historian and I can trust this whole connection. So your browser will get a secure connection and you can just answer the question and then it'll switch that connection to a uh, 32573 port, which is the uh, secured HTTPS port and then uh, give you a secured uh, connection. You can just do that once, always do it or continue on with the untrusted connection, which is obviously not recommended. All right, that's my quick overview of the new features of the historian.